Someone asked me a little while back, I think in one of the assemblies, what it's going to look like between the fourth and the fifth trumpet, especially given that, you know, I didn't know how those trumpets were going to go, that God was going to blow them, you know, sort of consecutively, pretty quickly, one after the other, and that there was going to be this two-year gap or over two-year gap between the fourth trumpet blowing and the fifth trumpet blowing. But that's the way it's gone. I mean, he doesn't have to lay out his plan in all of its details. And, you know, God has been known to lay out enough details in the plan so that he can test who actually loves him and who's looking. And then to those, he gives eyes to see and he gives a heart to understand and he gives ears to hear. But to those who don't love him, he hardens them and he removes their ability to see, hear, or understand. Jesus is a perfect example of that. He told the Jews for how many years that they were going to have a Messiah, that he was going to send a Messiah, he was going to restore the kingdom, and Jesus gets here and can't possibly be him, right? This? This is what you sent? Nothing that they would desire him. There was an Orthodox Jew doing a, an interview on anti-Zionism, and it just happened to pop up on my YouTube, so I started to watch a little bit, and I, I've heard a lot of, uh, I, I've actually heard some Orthodox Jews speaking quite well and speaking very humbly. And even though they haven't, they have yet to accept Jesus, I believe that those people will. And they, that they are genuinely humiliated by counterfeit Jews who are, who, who don't even believe in the word, don't believe in the law, but are using it for themselves. And then I'm seeing that they're, you know, such as in, in this interview, I really felt that this person was using the anti-Zionist movement as a way to gain glory for himself. And part of the way that I discern that is that he wasn't speaking on truth. He was accusing Christians of changing the law. And that was that accusation that was always coming against Paul. So this is someone who isn't really standing up for truth and saying, hey, these are the things. They're standing up with an ax to grind, wanting to blame everybody and condemn people like Paul, who was always getting that being accused of trying to change the law when all Paul was preaching is this was the Messiah we've been waiting for the law has been fulfilled in the Messiah here's what you need to understand now here's what the Messiah has said about the way that we need to live many of the things we were we've been doing were a shadow of things to come but the meaning has been found in Jesus Christ so I know what it is to have the right heart. I know what that looks like and I know what it feels like. I can have a respectful conversation with someone b without making those kinds of accusations. But when someone starts saying Christians changed our law, I'm going to speak up. And so I did. And it didn't end up <laughs> with a pretty response. It was not well received. But I'm going to defend my faith. I'm going to defend the truth. I'm going to say, no, that's not true. You guys rejected the Messiah. You're still rejecting the Messiah, I see. This was the Messiah who'd been promised all this time. So you really have to discern who actually has a heart for truth, who's capable of having a respectful conversation, because if it starts ending up in fighting, that just isn't what God wants anyway. So I didn't, you know, continue the argument. I just, I, I let it go. Nor was my response trying to elicit an argument, but rather clarification. This was the Messiah who was to come. He fulfilled the law. Here's how things changed. Was Paul being argumentative because he was speaking the truth? No. Argumentative is when you start making accusations like Christians changed our law. So be careful. Not everyone who's in the anti-Zionist movement has genuine motives or a heart for God. Many are using this as a platform to gain glory and followers for themselves. Be careful. So here's what we know between the fourth and fifth trumpet. We know that no one repents after the fifth trumpet. We know that the fourth trumpet has blown. We know that there's going to have to be a final separation because during that fifth trumpet, the witnesses are killed and a plague goes out to all those who do not have the seal. Remember that the witnesses in the multitude in white robes were sealed before any of the trumpets started blowing. Witnesses are only going to be here until that fifth trumpet. And it's not the trumpet that's touching them. It's not the trumpet that's killing them. You have to understand that because these trumpets are God's wrath. It's Satan falling from heaven, given, being given the keys to the shaft of the abyss and beginning his reign. 
the trumpets are the destroying angels. Those are, you know, like during Passover, God sent a destroying angel and he said, anyone who has this, he was describing a seal, the blood of the lamb over your door, you'll be passed over. That's the significance of Passover during this time that we're living in right now. Unfortunately, those observing Easter wouldn't understand that. How can they? During this time, as the trumpets have been blowing, he's been separating the wheat from the tares. He's been laying hearts bare. So this is a time right now between the fourth and fifth trumpet where he's laying hearts bare. Do you see that? So that's why I talk about this situation in which I commented on that video. That's not a heart for truth. That's a heart for dissension, to be argumentative, to be accusatory. Why did they need to go there? Like, why is that so important? Am I sitting here screaming about what Jews did in rejecting the Messiah? No, I put the focus on what we're, what we're talking about in the truth. Yes, that's a fact, but it's not my ax to grind. God takes that up. Why did he need, why does, is that man going around saying that? Because he's creating dissension. And when he says that, I've told you in other videos that what you see going on right now is going to happen to Christians. That is going to happen during the Antichrist reign. And this person is contributing to that anger towards true Christians. That's a heart issue. That, that is not the fruit of being in God. So what's happening between this fourth and fifth trumpet is that God is making that final separation because no one's going to repent after the fifth trumpet. There are some things that God has said to me over the last couple months that have been building up to what happened on October 7th. And I want to tell you what those things are. He had indicated to me weeks before that, that judgment is coming, that it will feel like it's crashing down on your heads. And I know that part of that was fulfilled in what happened on October 7th and what has continued. This is a whirlwind. I mean, this is like nonstop. We're hearing about this nonstop. Just because we're in, you know, many of us, most of the people who listen to this channel are in the United States, or maybe you're in Europe, or maybe you're, you know, just because you're not in Israel, this should be affecting you. Like you should be looking at this and understanding where we're at in history. It should feel like it's crashing down on your head. And then I think it was after he said that to me that he said, I can't give this away for free. I can't even give this away for free. And he's placed me in a position to understand that myself. I've given everything in my life to give this away for free, and I can't even give it away for free. People don't want the truth. And now that I realize it, the morning of October 7th, the Lord said to me, woke me up saying the bride has no regard for the bridegroom. Wow. <laughs> I just did not even realize that he said it to me that day, and I said it in assembly. So those in the assembly are my witness. That was before I even knew what was going on. The bride has no regard for the bridegroom. And so now that I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking about those who were at that festival on, you know, the Lord's Sabbath, lifting up statues of false gods in the air and claiming that this was the last day of the Festival of Tabernacles. Weeks before he did the same thing at a festival just like it, where there were pagans and you know, religious people could look at that and understand that God was bringing judgment, but ooh, he would never bring judgment to, to ethnic Jews, would he? And then hearing the narrative of the parents, none of the parents are saying, oh, maybe we shouldn't have had, maybe we shouldn't be supporting our kids going to things like this, where they're having orgies and doing drugs and, you know, dancing around statues of false gods. Maybe we shouldn't support that. Maybe we should be looking at that and realizing we need to return to God. No, what's the narrative of, of God's so-called people? They were just kids. They were just trying to have fun. My children are peaceful. That's not peace. That is not peace as God defines it. So that's what he literally woke me up out of my sleep and said that to me in the morning. The bride has no regard for the bridegroom. Wow, I don't know how I didn't realize that. I think there was just so much going on that day and I didn't learn about the attack until, until later, later that evening. And the thing he's been saying to me repeatedly lately is that hearts are being laid bare. Hearts are being laid bare. And that makes sense because that's the way that he separates us, us, right? That's the way he teases his people out from those who are not his people. Separates the sheep from the goats. It's by our heart. And our hearts are definitely being laid bare in the way that we're understanding what's going on right now in the world. 
If you are speaking a narrative based on politics or based on some counterfeit interpretation of scripture that you're going to somehow reap a blessing by blindly supporting a genocide, a genocide being committed by ethnic Jews, not Jews as God refers to in the Bible who are circumcised in heart, ethnic Jews who are using religion that they don't even believe in to justify what they're doing. And they're not even, they're misusing the religion. They're not even interpreting it correctly. God did lead his people into the promised land. And he told them that they would inherit, that that they would inhabit that land as long as they obeyed and they didn't turn to false gods. But they did. And they went into exile. And so true Jews in their humility understand and accept that. Understand and accept that they are working out a covenant and they're being persecuted by these people who claim to be using their religion, who are speaking in the name of their religion and their God that they don't even believe in. Zionists are not religious, at least not religious according to the actual word. I heard an interview the other day of Netanyahu saying that the two greatest books are the Sanskrit scrolls and the Bible. Like those things are not even compatible. What are you talking about? This is an admitted atheist who uses religion as a political bartering tool. He's evil. What he's doing is evil. And the last thing that God woke me up this morning speaking to me is that God's voice thunders in marvelous ways. He does great things beyond our understanding. He says to the snow, fall on the earth and to the rain, shower, be a mighty downpour. Now you can look at this and you can see it a couple different ways. Someone recently came on their channel and was telling me that when they listen to my videos, they feel condemned rather than convicted, that they should feel convicted, not condemned. Well, there's no precedent for God's people being responsible or anyone else being responsible for your feeling of condemnation. If you feel condemned, it's because you are. It's because you need to return to God. So the way that you hear this is going to really reveal your heart. And I've been telling you that that statement that God made to me about something crashing down on our heads, even though God's people are here and they're seeing what's going on, they're not going to be touched by God's wrath. Doesn't mean it's not grievous. It doesn't mean that it does not grieve us to our very soul, to the very core of our soul that we're seeing that people who are misusing our own religion and God's name and his word to stand by in support of murder. So you can look at this scripture in two different ways. If you're in him, this is the good news. If you're not, it's not good news for you. God's voice thunders in marvelous ways. He does great things beyond our understanding. He says to the snow, fall on the earth, and to the rain shower, be a mighty downpour. There was actually one more thing that God was speaking to me in the last couple days um, that I'm remembering now, and that is, is actually more of, he hasn't been speaking something to me specifically about this, but keeps putting this on me that we're going to be blessed, that God's people are going to be blessed. And I'm not talking prosperity gospel. I'm not talking about this counterfeit revival thing that counterfeit Christianity loves to pitch. I'm talking about that small remnant of people who actually love God, who actually are his people, that we've been working to build his temple and he's going to bless us. And we actually saw that last night. We saw that last night as we came together with others who are not familiar with the channel and, you know, and we just came together to have a a discussion about truth, about what we've seen in counterfeit Christianity, what we're seeing right now, what are the times, what do we need to be preparing ourselves for? How do we need to be interpreting what's going on right now? And we were really blessed. It sounds like from the reports today that every single person who came to that meeting last night got something out of it. And God made truth known. He revealed truth. And so what's coming, what's happening between this fourth and fifth trumpet is that the last of people are coming in and the last of people are going out. The last of those who are going to be harvested in are coming in. And the last of those who have been swearing falsely in God's name are going out. They won't return to God. They just won't. And, you know, after that fifth trumpet, it will not happen. No one repents 
after those trumpets. And so there's a great split, a great divide between those who are standing in the truth and those who are not. And if you've already been seeing that, you're going to see it even more. And you're beginning to see all of the key players line up, aren't you? You're seeing that what's going on right now in Israel was largely a result of the Balfour Declaration that the UK provided a, a pledge of support to set this up, to set up Israel as a state and to persecute the Palestinian people. Who are the key players, guys? Europe, the United States, the false prophet, counterfeit Christianity. Why was NATO quiet for so long? Why is the U.S. so dead set on supporting these counterfeit Christian ideas? Why have they for the last 75 years been supporting persecution of the Palestinian people? And then all of a sudden, when the Palestinian people or when a group is formed of desperate people who start fighting back, who have nothing to lose because they've lost all their family, and they start acting crazy, though it's not that crazy if you look at the context. Then the U.S. comes up with a narrative about terrorism. Oh, no, these are not human beings who are suffering. These are terrorists. And Israel, Israel is our Messiah idol. I mean, that's the truth. Like, counterfeit Christianity worships this idol. And I, I posted this uh, interview the other day of this heretic rabbi saying, you Christians worship one Jew, you should be worshiping all Jews. And obviously he's an idiot, but that's exactly what counterfeit Christianity is doing. To hear that attitude so blatantly put out there like that is like, oh, yeah, you just said it. They've been doing it, but you just said it. You just said exactly what the Antichrist in that whole agenda thinks and desires. And that is exactly what they are doing. They are worshiping that counterfeit Antichrist beast. He's just stupid enough to say it out loud. That is exactly what counterfeit Christianity is doing. And so during this time, in the next couple of years, the pieces have to come together and the split has to take place. It has to be finalized. So you're seeing and will continue to see the ways in which God is accomplishing this over the next two years. And it shouldn't surprise you. And, you know, he worked things out perfectly having us read Revelation first in the Bible study, didn't he? Because you guys who have could be bothered to show up to Bible study, you're the wise. You know exactly what's going on. The word says the wise will understand what's going on, but the wicked will not. The wicked, by the way, in counterfeit Christianity, they don't understand. They have no clue what's going on. They keep speaking in false authority, that's for sure, but they have no idea what's going on. God does not consult with them. And this should blow you away because it's not the way soothsayers and psychics who call themselves teachers and prophets, it's not what they predicted, is it? It's not that story of the man who's going to show up, who is the Antichrist, who's going to dominate the whole world, right? Pinky in the brain. Come on. A man, really? One man going to have global power? Really? No, the man of lawlessness is Satan. The Antichrist in, of the very end is a kingdom. It's very clear in scripture. I demonstrated it last night. I've demonstrated it multiple times in scripture. There is an antichrist spirit. That's Satan. He'll be revealed. The man of lawlessness will be revealed during the last 45 days that God's people are here before that seventh trumpet blows and the resurrection takes place. The son of man is also going to be revealed at that time. It's not the same as he's going to come at that time. He's going to be revealed. You're going to know the difference between good and evil, you're going to know what's been going on here this whole time. They will be revealed. So John said the Antichrist was already in the world, even now is in the world, and many Antichrists have come. So Antichrist, he defines as those who deny that Jesus is Christ. So there's actually an Antichrist spirit that is Satan. There are Antichrists who have that spirit of Satan, who deny that Christ, Jesus is the Christ. And there is the Antichrist kingdom that is going to rise in the very end, and that consists of Satan and his little Antichrist, right? The little Antichrist. Do you know what Christian means? means? It means little Christ. That's the name you have on your forehead. You know what Antichrist means? It means little Antichrists. They're of Satan. That's his kingdom. Christianity is God's kingdom. 
And the Antichrist has a lot of little Antichrists who have snuck in among us. They call their se- themselves Christian, but they are counterfeit. And God's really blown that open, hasn't he? He's really blown that open in the last couple of years. You see what they support. You see what they allow in. Everything goes as long as you bring your checkbook. They don't care. They don't have any love for God and no regard for his laws, his decrees, his heart. They simply do not care. So it's going to blow you away the way that God is revealing what he's actually said in the word. In the word, He has not told me ahead of time how things are going to look. He reveals it to me either as it's happening or he tells me before how this is forming. You've seen that, yes? Or he might give me a word of warning, such as something's coming that's going to fall on your, that's going to feel like it's crashing down on your head. It should blow you away because it's not the way that those false teachers and false prophets have predicted. God does not lay things out like that. He doesn't lay out all the details. Here's how it's going to happen so that you can make your Hollywood movie. Christ is a perfect example of that. They were told ahead of time that he was going to send a Messiah. They had a whole image of what that Messiah was going to look like. And the reason they had that is because they did not love truth. They did not love God. Otherwise, he would have moved them into understanding what God loves. That he was not going to have someone coming in royal, you know, attire like kings in palaces. So where was their heart? What were they looking for? Something that was going to make them look good, where they were going to be, you know, in their pomp and power, reigning with Christ. That's not how it went down. That's not God's heart. And counterfeit Christianity likes to get real judgy about it. But I guarantee you that they would handle things much worse than the Jews did. Even worse. That they would completely reject him from day one. So God does things as he does things, not according to the imaginations of man. And then we see who is watching and who has a heart for him based on whether or not they can see what's going on. And so you see that in the book of Daniel. The wise will see. They will know what's going on. The wicked will not. And most do not see. And we were told that too, that they would not see. So I don't know why counterfeit Christianity would pitch otherwise in their revival propaganda. All of this that's happening at the universities and and like they're setting it up, which is very interesting to me because when did the Holy Spirit ever need somebody else to like fabricate that and set it up, you know, set up the revival God's in charge of his own show. He doesn't need you to do that by the work of your hands. This is counterfeit. There's nothing in the word that talks about this kind of a movement. The word talks about revival, which is you were once dead and you crossed over to life. And these people don't understand that because they're still dead. So to answer the question, what happens between the fourth and fifth trumpet? Hearts are laid bare. Counterfeit Christianity, counterfeit religion, counterfeit Judaism rises, gains power. The key players that we've talked about in biblical prophecy and end times prophecy, they are rising to power. They are testifying to one another. You're seeing the things that they've been doing over several years to help this rise, to give it a platform. You are probably going to see Christians start to be persecuted. An attitude toward true Christians, you're going to see that it's going to get pretty nasty. And how do I know that? Because the word tells me in Revelation 11 that the witnesses tormented those who live on the earth. So that didn't just happen like on the 1261st day. They've been doing that. So you're going to see a nastiness start to rise. You're going to see a true separation of the sheep from the goats. And everything that's going to build up to that fifth trumpet, the fifth trumpet uh, in which counterfeit religion rises and, and really persecutes God's people to the extent that it is kicked off by torturing and killing God's witnesses. They kill his prophets one more time. None of these things should surprise you at all. But it is interesting to see them unfold. It is shocking and grievous to see that it's gotten this bad. And that even two years before the witnesses are killed, you can see the people who are going to kill them. You can see them right now because they're already giving their approval for people to be killed in the name of false religion, claiming to be doing a service to God. You can already see it right now. So it should not surprise you that it is time for this to happen. 
that we are living in those days, that this is the end, that God's witnesses are here. Please pray about these things that I've said. Pray about the times. Pray about discerning who the witnesses are. And pray about what you need to be doing.